Hi, I'm Sal McCagliano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University, a former Merchant Mariner and an adjunct professor of Maritime Industry Policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On with Shipping, a follow-on to the episode regarding the Express Pearl, which is currently on fire off the close coast excuse me, of Colombo, Sri Lanka. So this story has just gotten worse as it went on. I want to do a quick update. I apologize, not very well attired today. Uh, I'm looking a little worse for wear, but but uh, not as bad as the Express Pearl, unfortunately. This is her right here off the coast of Colombo. You can see the fire has ravaged the vessel, run the entire length of the vessel. Story in G-Captain, Express Pearl looking worse for wear as fire continues to burn. Uh, obviously, the vessel is coming close to being a con total loss. Uh, she's at anchor. You can see her anchor right here. She is off the coast right now of Colombo. I'll pull it up here for you. So this is Express Pearl. She is off the coast of Sri Lanka, uh, what was the island of Ceylon, the port of Colombo. Zoom in here a little bit more here. Let's see if we can get her. There she is. Uh, at anchor, as you'll see right here with a scale right here, uh, one mile. She's a few miles then off the beach right there, surrounded by some tugs and some other vessels, uh, but completely on fire, abandoned by the crew. The crew has been rescued, but not much left of the vessel. I want to take you over to this story. This is the story done by Sam Chambers over at Splash 24 seven. Sam does a great job always with his stories. Uh, there's a couple of sites I follow a lot. You'll see if you follow my videos uh, that I go to uh, GCAP, obviously one of them, but also Splash 24 seven does a great job. Uh, Sam really dug into this. And one of the things he found out is the Express Pearl was denied entry into both Qatar and India before catching fire in Colombo. The ship is loaded with nitric acid Nitric acid is, is just absolutely nasty. Here you go. Uh, HNO3, one of the most widely used di digestion uh, reagents for the most widely used primary oxidant for the deco decomposition of organic matter. I pulled this up. Uh, I'm a firefighter, a volunteer firefighter for 20 years. Uh, we carry on our trucks these things. These are uh, emergency response guides for all types of hazardous material. This is the response guide for nitric acid. Toxic inhalation, ingestion, or contact reactant with water or moist air may release toxic, corrosive, or flammable gases. It's on a ship in the middle of the ocean. Uh, they've been spraying water on this stuff to kind of put the fire out. Reactive water may generate much heat that will increase the concentration of fumes in the air. Fire will produce irritating uh, corrosive and or toxic gases. It's a no-win scenario. If you come down here for where it has fire, let's see, let's pull this up here. Oop, I went too far, sorry back up here. It was uh, 156, I believe it was. Here's the ways to handle it. The combustible material may burn, but does not ignite readily. Substance will react with water, some violently releasing flammable, toxic, corrosive gases, vapor. It, it talks all about the, the issues with it. Uh, uh, contacts may, uh, with metal may evolve, flammable hydrogen gas, it, nothing good about this stuff uh, at all. Uh, basically, evacuate from it, get as far from it as you can. Uh, large fires, water spray, fog, or alcohol-resistant foam. Uh, again, you're not going to be able to do that on this fire unless you bring in large foam carriers. Go back to the image here that you have. She's out of control. Col uh, containers collapsing onto each other. Uh, you're just seeing a catastrophic loss of the vessel. But again, go back to Sam's story. What's interesting about this story is they detected this leak early. They found out that the um, uh, nitric acid was improperly stowed. They had a leak on board and they attempted when they were in the Persian Gulf to get into Qatar and then later into India to get in. But both ports refused their entry. Uh, go in here to Sam's story. And again, I will link all these to the story is uh, speaking with Splash today from Singapore. Tim Hartall, Hartnall, the executive chairman of Express Feeders, said that the poor packaging was a result of the acid leak, which the crew had detected in the Arabian Sea, thousands of kilometers from Sri Lanka. On detecting the leak, the ship's captain then contacted two ports, Hazara on the west coast of India and Hamad in Qatar, requesting to offload the containers in question. The request to deny the ship, which was delivered from a yard in China this February, brand new vessel, made its way to Sri Lanka. It's a case of not in my backyard syndrome. Again, this is the situation I talked about the other day with Beirut and the fact that cargo was offloaded in Beirut, left there for, for years. And then all of a sudden you have this. Uh, the ship has declared general average, meaning the cargo on board is gonna to have to assume part of the cost of the salvage for the vessel, or more importantly, the cleanup, which I think is the big issue right here. One of the things we're starting to see is wreckage from the vessel coming ashore in Colombo burnt containers, material coming ashore here. 
This is the track line for the vessel from marine traffic coming out of Qatar, again, trying to get into India, diverting itself to Sri Lanka to come in there. And again, now at anchor off Sri Lanka on fire and burning. Uh, this is a video here. Go ahead and play this for you right here. This is the video shot by the Sri Lankan uh, Air Force, I believe, showing the vessel off this area. Let me go ahead and magnify that a little bit for you. That's off the port. You can see how close she is off the port right there. So she's only a few miles uh, off the port of Colombo. This is early in the fire, obviously, when the fire was was uh, beginning to consume the vessels. You'll see the containers start collapsing again. It has run the entire length of the vessel, the fire at this point. Uh, it, it, it's nasty. You have to get away from it. Toxic smoke, obviously, from the nitric acid. But most importantly, is you're seeing debris in the water all along there. The containers are spilling open. You're getting uh, pollutants in the water and contamination. And one of the things that Sam talks about in his story, which he makes a case of, is, is, is the parallel to this between a uh, disaster that took place in 2002 off the coast of Spain with a tanker by the name of the Prestige. Uh, Prestige was carrying heavy fuel oil, broke apart, and had a huge environmental impact. In this case, this is, uh, go back here, up into the story here. Uh, this is the story from the Prestige sinking of 2002. Again, I will have this story in here. She broke apart uh, and again, caused one of the worst environmental spills off the coast. Go over here to the story, fire destroys the uh, MV Express uh, Pearl. This is from the Colombo Gazette. Colombo is the main city right there which is off the port, I'll run through these photos here for you because I think these photos give you a good image right here. Again, these are coming from the Sri Lankan Air Force. You can see how that fire got all the way forward, consumed those forward containers, which weren't in the fires earlier. You'll see the debris coming ashore. This is one of the things they capture really well in these videos right here, or these images right here, is all the debris coming ashore, people living right there. This is gonna be contaminants on the beach. No telling what it's going to be, fuel oil, nitric acid, just, just uh, containers coming ashore. Containers don't always sink right away. They float, so they go with the current. And in this case, they seem to be coming ashore. There's the vessel completely engulfed uh, at this time. It is, it is without a doubt a disaster for the Sri Lankans that they're going to have to deal with. Again, which could have been minimized had they been able to get these containers off, realizing the leaks taking place, gotten the containers off in Qatar, India. They could have prevented this from happening. Brand new vessel should not have happened. Here's a story. Uh, again, Sri Lanka prepares to face major oil spill from it. I don't think it's an oil spill as much as it's going to be this, this uh, hazardous material spill, which is really the, the, the bigger issue that we're seeing right here. So obviously this disaster is, is, is going to continue along here for quite a while. No telling yet when exactly the vessel will succumb to the fire, if she will sink or not. She is obviously uh, a constructive total loss, no salvage of the vessel at all, even though Smith Salvage has been brought in. Smith Salvage, the same salvage op uh, company that worked on Ever Given in the Suez is now uh, online to basically assist with this uh, salvage uh, of the vessel. She still may be afloat, you never know. Uh, the fire is gutting the vessel, but again, you may not see damage to the vessel at all. The problem is that the fire gets into the engine room. The engine room could melt some pipes, some fittings, some gaskets, which will cause flooding of the engine room. And you may see the vessel start to, to go down. But again, catastrophic loss. And again, this shouldn't have been Sri Lankan's problem. This shouldn't have been their issue. This was identified long before this. They knew about the, the leak from the cargo containers, should have gotten the containers off, should have minimized it, brought hazardous material teams on board talk about cleaning it up, preventing a catastrophic, not just loss of the vessel, but now an environmental catastrophe off the coast of Sri Lanka and the Indian Ocean. So we'll keep following it. I want to provide an update because there's a lot of new information on it. I'll have all the links to this in the show notes. Uh, if you like the video, I don't think you like the story, but if you like the video, uh, please uh, go ahead, subscribe, hit the like button, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos and feel free to share. Let other people know uh, this occurrences happen on a fairly routine basis. This is the this is 50,000 vessels over a thousand gross tons operating on the world's oceans on a daily basis. And unfortunately, maritime accidents and disasters like this do happen fairly routinely. About every week we see something like this uh, come along. This is pretty obviously horrific and caught in in videos in color. Uh, not obviously a, a great story. Fortunately, the crew's been saved, but now the impact is going to be on the nation of Sri Lanka.
So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll keep you posted as more information comes out. This is Sal signing off.